Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be going over entry patterns, uh, a few different ones that I find really interesting and I want to dive into all the different points around them as well uh, and, and a few other nuances really surrounding everything. So um, to begin with, I'll start off with structure change. Now obviously everyone goes off of you know market structure changes and, and you know looking for structure uh, changes of structure on the 30 minute etc um, which can be useful but there are a few other things that I think are the really most powerful in regards to at least my own trading and how I used to track market structure. Um, the first way is from tracking from daily open. Okay, so I've covered this before, but this is a fairly uh, common thing for me at least. Um, I'm a day trader. You know, I I'm trading intraday movements. Why do I need to be aware of what's going on on, on on all these different time frames when I can lock it back to a set date and say to myself, okay, from daily open, so this is where daily open is. Okay, we are clearly downtrending from daily open. So instead of acknowledging all this other price action because it's really hard to determine sometimes you know it's very open to say it's really hard to determine where actually this structure really starts from so setting it to a locked period of daily open and tracking what today is doing is really narrowing it down to getting a clearer view as to where the market is trying to move today because that's what I'm going to be doing I'm taking a trade today I'm very likely to close it also today so I want to be knowing what's going on today now that's all cool but how would that track the structure I mean obviously it is just going down from here you know clearly today at least we're going down um, but what's really really important for me is actually I can use uh, a range chart, okay, um, to then determine uh, the the structure of the of the of the chart of the day actually a lot better, okay. So the, number one being daily using daily open as kind of a fixed look back, and then using the range chart. Now the second one being the range chart is really really important. Um, is Sorry, I just I just got caught up there. There's a few things. So on trading view, you can have this range chart option. So if you just go to here and to drop down here and select the uh, where is it the range at the bottom and then start adding these different intervals. Now I will do a whole another separate video on range charts as a whole, but because there are different variations as to when you want to be using a certain value and when not. Um, but it really does clean up a lot of the noise in relation to tracking structure. Hence, you can use it for this. Um, yeah, but in reality, what I tend to do, especially more so for my execution, but I'll cover this later on uh, in another video, um, you want to be looking, you know, the type of range chart and the value of range chart you want to be using is based on the time the candles are printing, at least in my opinion. Um, so, you know, I tend to want to match it up to a three to six minute kind of range, you know, how often are the candles printing here locally? Uh, these are every 10 or so minutes, so I'll drop it down to 1,000, how, how often are these printing? This is a bit more, re yeah, this is, you know, every five or so minutes, this is a bit more reasonable. Uh, and you can really just see, the tr the st track the structure on the day. Okay. You know, we're moving down. We haven't cleared any sort of upward structure. And it just, you know, alongside that with the fact that I'm tracking from daily open, it really, really, really gives me a clear picture as to how to track structure and identifying that shift in structure uh, is really important. Now, another thing to track, uh, to talk about in relation to market structure Okay, because we we're gonna. Put, I could be saying, you know, look, this is a change of potential structure here locally. Um, it's really important that when you're looking for a change of structure, that you have a strong base pivot to to go from, right? And what I mean by that is, you've got this is the base pivot, then you've got the change of structure here, right? I, if I only want to be really long in this move, if this is a really strong pivot. Now, there are a few really common things you can be looking at to determine that. At least in my eyes, there are a few two things really that are really important. Number one being round number liquidity, which I'm going to cover um, in, in a bit more detail as well later within this video as one of the strategies. Um, but also being like a poor high, poor low um, kind of scenario. So if we just head over to exo charts quickly here. Sorry for the flashbang scenario from the black to the white. Um, but you can see here we've got two... TPOs at the bottom here. So this is a poor low, right? That's not to say we can't move up from here, but this is just really on my mind that um, we've left down a poor low on the chart, meaning this is a stronger chance of being revisited. Hence, would it be so wise of me to be aggressively trading a structure change off of a pivot that's got a likely a higher chance of being revisited? I would say not. That that's not to say it can't just completely reverse from here, but you know, it's a, pro it's a game of probabilities. There's no need to necessarily take that risk if I know this is a stronger chance of being revisited. Okay. Um, Hopefully that makes sense on that front. Uh, the other one, yes, like I did say, was um, round number liquidity, which I'm going to cover later on anyway. But basically, this this low here, okay, if we're just looking at the top left corner there, um, up here, um, the low put in is at 56, 56, uh, 56.37.8. Now, if we just mark out here 56K, 
the likelihood is we've got a poor low putting on the chart here alongside the fact that we front run a, a key round number which i'm going to get into later it, it doesn't make sense to necessarily change uh, trade this shift of structure so aggressively and i'm still likely to think that you know we're still downtrending on the day unless we really clear these highs here it's not so wise of me to be trading an aggressive change of structure so quickly off of a, a weak base pivot okay so that is how i look at market structure um the, the base pivot is tracking from daily open at least for me as i'm a day trader in that sense um, my trades are more intraday i'm not fucking trading on uh, the the daily or the weekly you know in that case set a different fix look back from my experience of what i've been seeing as well that's really really important and no one's told me this as well so um it's really just from my own testing um so that's market structure that's the first one the second one being trapped delta and trapped traders okay so we just remove all of this Off the chart and I'm, i apologize this might be a bit of a longer video um but yeah trap traders trap delta if we want to get this oi indicator working okay so this is i use two indicators for this you can use this on trading view or we can do it on x so it doesn't really matter um but i'll go through it for simplicity sake on trading view with you all okay so there's a few things uh what i want to do here star volume delta Right, I want to change this to columns because it's easier for you to see the delta. So this is the bottom part is delta, this top part is open interest. Um, to identify trap traders, okay. So this is um this adds to okay, I'll talk about this because we actually have a pivot here which is really nice in this case. Um five minute I'm just looking through here. Any good examples of this? Uh I'm really confused as to why the open interest takes a while to load there. Okay, so we'll talk about this up here, nonetheless. Um, we'll talk about this down here. Okay, so we're going to be looking at open interest and delta. So open interest is referring to new position. I've covered this many, many times, but I just want to—I'll briefly cover it because it is a part of an entry pattern you can look for. Um, open interest increasing is new contracts and new money coming into the market and then the delta is determining which side that is coming into the market so new money coming in open interest increasing negative delta that's new shorts coming in that's new short new people selling down here so this candle is predominantly people selling okay so people are selling down here um now why would you sell down here i don't know maybe that's why we're getting this bit of relief here um but Identify, you know, first of all, you have to identify where, you know, is there a key level of interest as to, you know, don't just look at this randomly, otherwise you're at the mercy of the markets, right? And that's the worst thing, you know, it, any of these entry patterns, you, you could just be at the mercy of the markets if you're not doing them at actually sensible levels and, and relevant levels, okay? Um, but, yeah, let's just imagine this is a key POI. I'm just going to imagine this is a key POI for you. You see new shorts come into the level, okay, um, with this candle. And this is, again, like I said, the most important thing here is the, is the, you know, the level of interest. You have to have one. And then all of a sudden, the base of this candle, I mean, you can be looking at the value area. So what we can do, uh, I'll do this chart. Okay. What up this here? It's probably a bit easier to read this here, if I'm honest. is you want to be looking at the value area okay uh, value area I apologize for this um, but yeah you basically want to be seeing so this is the so if we're just looking here this is this down candle here 15 minute here and then we've got the 15 minute here again I'm just making this all visible for you so this 15 minute and you can see that that value area is then closed above in the next candle okay so the idea is that there's new shorts within this candle and then they're likely then trapped out because this candle's then closed up here okay away and outside that value area as to where those new shorts are likely entering from okay that is then your, your trigger point to then enter with your invalidation below the swing low there okay that is the kind of scenario you're looking at um 
overall to then you know say that you can see a move higher because then you've got the shorts are, are confirmed trapped and that's the most important thing is to wait for the shorts to actually be trapped because it's very easy to just say level of interest here i'm going to execute down here but the, the, bon the only reason you're actually going to be able to execute really well is if you're able to identify when those shorts are actually trapped and that's when candles close away from them verifying your theory thus allowing for further fuel to the upside in this case you know to another level if you've got bias in that direction okay so that's you know two things to keep in mind there trapped dealt trap traders and structure um now move swiftly on to the next one which is round number liquidity so like i said before um what i'll do here is i've got a template up as well so i've got this round numbers okay and what this will do here <laughs> um this is probably one of my more favorite things okay and that is round numbers you know and and this is on bitcoin uh every 1k so you can these are my settings for anyone interested uh, it's just a round numbers levels indicator every 500 dollars it will place a number on the chart uh, or, or a line on the chart for every for 57 56 55 k and if these lump levels haven't been tested for a while okay they will provide reactions because people are likely to have stops etc above them below them um and in non-common places so it's really really interesting because everyone at this stage here at this high okay they're likely to be thinking okay we're going to be taking this high out okay but what's really really important here is that you've got distance between when this was tested this uh, fifty eight thousand dollars um you then move down again coincidentally you then see a bounce off of 50 56 500 but i'll talk about the levels you want to be interested in more um front run this you know you can see you're basically ping-ponging off of these round number levels nonetheless just distance between this high being this high being put in and then this 58k again being taken and typically you want to see at least a few hours to generate some stops liquidity whatever above that level to actually see and warrant a reaction from there because you don't want to just say you know the level's tested it's tested it's, you know it becomes irrelevant but the thing is these levels can say fixated on the chart and as long as there's distance distance between when they're being tested they often provide a provider's reaction and also a magnet okay um, so that's really really important and you can see here you know you front run the level here so you look at the high top left 57.989.1 the next high is at 58.39.7 now this isn't to say that these levels are going to be continuously always testing but from my findings i'm if you know if we front on a level as such you know like this I'm more than likely to wait for another test at least to either breach it one more time or before reversal or to see continuation just in general you know like you could expect to see potentially that at that stage it's only then you see the reaction back towards the downside okay um so you can be looking at this at every a thousand uh, dollar increment or five hundred dollar increments um i put five hundred dollars but you know because i do like to see every five hundred dollars as well it can be a bit too much i'm more trading on the intraday so it's more relevant to me um but yeah, they're really, really powerful. And the thing you want to see between them is distance between them being tested. And the best case is where you have them lined up with another key level of interest. Okay. So if you've got, for example, a 30 minute liquidity or yeah, 30 minute liquidity or MPOC related to them, go watch that video. It's probably my most useful video from my testing um, on the channel probably is the POC liquidity one. Uh, the amount of stuff I use that every day okay um but yeah nonetheless in confluence if you've got another level of interest up here god i think i just really muddled my words there. if you've got another level of interest up here and then you've got round number liquidity being taken that is like added confluence for me to then execute a trade for reversal for example okay um and again like i said magnets between you know if they've got front run this could still see uh lower prices due to that um that's round number liquidity again um the last thing i'll say on that is that again if you are looking at uh bitcoin or or ethereum for example you don't have to do every a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars it can be you can place extra emphasis on like bigger numbers so seventy thousand dollars sixty thousand dollars every ten thousand dollar increment as well as a swing or, or higher time from trade as well is also just as relevant um, they will provide reactions just ensure there is time spent between it being tested and then retested again you don't want it tested continuously continuously as the level it, it, it will not be as, as as important or reflect as a good reaction from my testing okay um, and the last one is internal liquidity so um, yeah this is a, a good one uh, I've always covered liquidity on this channel um, lines here let's go to here okay and what this is this is a indicator that will show off resting liquidity resting stops in the market okay and you can be looking at this for potential reactions again this is hard to see right now so what i'll do is solid i think i had this on here before 
Okay, yeah, this is better. So you can see here, um, I use this on the 15 minute and the hourly generally, but you can see here where you've got resting stops really close together. You can be expecting uh, potential reactions here. So, you know, this is a free, indica free indicator I got made for myself um, by a good friend, Alan Stey, he's really good at indicators, so I've got him to make that. Um, pivotal moments, yeah, just type that in and you can see here, so we've got two stops, two lows here, resting high, low, high, low. A general, uh, good liquidity below there and you want to be seeing as well a big gap below price so this is a really good level for me at least to be level, potentially paying attention to the market if price eventually ever reaches down here maybe we see something like this before a bounce you know this is really important and you can be looking at again some of these some of this as well you know it's really important to pay attention to to some of these as well because you can be looking at them in reference to where people are going to get trapped um and uh, tons and tons of different things because you can be using all of these different entry patterns as confluence you know um, if you've also got a round number down here that could play into dividends as well um, if you've got potentially trapped traders that come in and start shorting the market down here that can play as an entry trigger as well um, it, all of these different factors are really really important as to whether you're going to be executing or not um, one thing in relation to the internal liquidity is swing failure pattern so you can just look for a gen generic swing failure pattern move below these lows here so I'd mark out this level here okay the absolute low stops okay I'd mark at the very low here and you can see you know mark that out and then just turn off the indicator and and, and you know you've got your level marked on the chart for the day um, but it's really what happens down at those levels that are really important swing failure patterns spike in volume liquidations I've go over this all in a, every single time okay um, but yeah, um, what's really good about when you're looking for this internal liquidity sweeps is that everyone at this stage, okay, let's say for example down here, everyone at this stage should price get down here again. I'm not saying it's going to, I'm just, you know, going over a few points. If it does, is that everyone's expecting the major pivot to be taken. So it does generally offer some relief at least. You know, you might not see a complete reversal, but you'll see some relief as everyone's expecting this overall pivot to be taken. Um, and there's nowhere else for it to go at least you know, if it loses this level, but towards that pivot, people start aggressively shorting in fear of a breakdown uh, to try and catch that move. So you can catch, you know, a reversal trade, at least, you know, maybe something like this before it then continues further down. Um, so yeah, that's just one thing to note from these is that you will get a lot of people caught off guard through the, the method of internal liquidity. Um, my brain's really not up for it this morning, it seems. But yeah, um, I want to apologize if I've been waffling a little bit within this video, but nonetheless, um, I'm hoping my point has come across really well um, through the four different methods of execution and entry patterns. Uh, the pivotal moments, again, is used on the 15 minute and the hourly. So I, well, that's what I do, at least you can use it on whatever you want, do your testings uh, for that. It's basically Williams Fractal. Um, but yeah, you can see there tons of different uh, in the lines and, and methods to be using but again i using the 15 minute and the hourly these entry patterns as well just as a final note to conclude on these these entry patterns are not necessarily strategies in themselves what i'd really recommend you do is you take one or two of these these entry patterns that i've gone through and you hone in on them and you really really uh you know nail down and and create your own strategy from them because what i've just said here are fairly just entry level stuffs in relation to these different strategies and entry patterns you know are you going to be looking at the 15 minute or the hourly you know pick one hone in on that what do you want to see at these levels what exactly do you want to see at these levels are there certain um range settings that you don't want to be trading on on the market structure what exactly do you want to see where exactly do you want to see it and when do you exactly want to see it okay and this video is kind of just a guideline to these entry triggers to help you build part of your strategy again I've got my own strategy and it uses or compass in all of these different things in various different ways in, in different strategies, okay, and different elements. So that's why I'd recommend you take one or two, hone in them, really specialize in one or two and add them into your strategy and, and write it down. No one really writes this stuff down and when that's really the most important thing here. So write it down, get it part of your strategy, hone in, specialize. And that's, that's all I'd really say, but hopefully you found something value, valuable in this video um, and I'll catch you all later. Thank you very much.